Now let's take a look at this particular quadratic equation. 3x squared minus 15x plus 18. Well, good news for us is that this is already set equal to zero. We just need to factor this. Now one of the things that a lot of students forget about when it comes to factoring is to factor out the greatest common factor if there is one. So when we look at this, there is a common factor for all three terms, and that's 3. So factor out the 3, and now we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, but before we go on, I do want to remind you guys that this guy has a degree of 2. And that degree of 2 means that we're supposed to have two solutions. Okay, so let's see how this works out. All right, I've got this polynomial inside here. Nice trinomial, so I have this expectation that it's going to factor as two binomial factors with x leading off each of those guys. Now let's see if we can find the factor of 6, or the factors of 6 that will add to 5. So the factors of 6 that add to 5 would be 2 and 3. And in order to get the right sign so that we have a negative 5x for the middle term, but a positive 6 when we multiply, both of these guys need to be negative. Now, using that zero factor theorem would say you set each factor equal to zero. Well, let's see what that looks like. So 3 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. We're only supposed to have two solutions, right? But we have three factors. Well, if I start over here, x minus 3 equals 0 means that x equals positive 3. x minus 2 equals 0 means that x equals positive 2. And over here, notice there's no x, right? So the question here is, can 3 ever equal 0? And the answer is no. 3 doesn't equal 0. So when we're using that zero factor theorem, we are only supposed to set um, these variable factors equal to 0. Because constant factors like the 3 are never going to equal 0. So they're never going to give us a solution. We're supposed to have two answers here because this is x squared, and we have our two answers right there. Let's take a look at the next equation that we have. 7x to the third plus 12x squared minus 4x equals 0. Well, if you look at this, I hope that you recognize that there is a common factor for all three terms. Uh, we can factor x out of each of these. So this now becomes 7x squared plus 12x minus 4 is equal to 0. And really, before I, before I did that, I really should have pointed out the fact here is that you have a degree of 3. So that means at the end, we're supposed to have three solutions. OK. Well, I need to factor that polynomial, but I don't want to deal with that and the x all here at the same time. So here's what I suggest you do. Take this guy off to the side. So let's do that over here. So let's take 7x squared plus 12x minus 4, and let's factor this. All right. So if we do the AC method to get an idea about what we're supposed to have here, so A times C is 7 times 4, and we get 28. Now, you know me. You know how I kind of ignore the sign until the very end, because I'm trying to find factors of 28 that are going to subtract to give me 12. And those factors of 28 that have a difference of 12 are 2 and 14. And so those are the numbers I'm going to use to split up that middle term. All right, so this becomes 7x squared, there's 2x, there's 14x, and minus 4. Now make sure that you address the issue of the signs right away. So you have to get a positive here in the middle, which means the larger of the two numbers must be positive. And what about the 2? Is it positive or negative? Well, in order for you to get a positive 12x at the end, this guy needs to be a negative. And this kind of makes sense here, because a negative times a positive it's going to give you a negative at the end once we start doing the whole factoring process. All right. In the first group, we see that we have a common factor of x. So factor that out, and we are left with 7x minus 2. 
The second group, which begins with a plus, has a common factor of 2. So factor that out, and again, we have 7x minus 2, which is exactly what we're supposed to have, right? These guys are the exact same factor. So I'll bring that up front, like so. And this is times x plus 2. So I did the factorization off on the side. There's no need to you know, muddle uh, this work up here. So this is x times 7x minus 2 times x plus 2 for that complete factorization. Now, again, we're supposed to have three solutions. We have three factors, right? So we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So x equals 0, or 7x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. Well, here's something that may kind of blow your mind. x equals 0 is an equation, and it's, all, it's already solved for x. So x equals 0, just like that. Over here, the steps that you would take to get x by itself would be to add 2 to both sides and divide by 7. There is solution number 2. And over here, subtract 2 on both sides, so x equals negative 2. Please make sure that you don't say x minus 2 because the solution is x equals negative 2. So we expected three solutions, we have three solutions, and there we go.